I believe we're ready to start here. Whatever starting here means, I don't know how to start. I don't know how to start this. So, this is the first stream where we're gonna try developing a game, but like, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start on this. I don't think we're gonna start like proper development right now. Right now we're just gonna try to make some prototype mechanics that I know we want to implement into this game. So I've mentioned during my streams lately, like from time to time, that for a class at university, I'm part of a small team and we're basically working to develop a game together. Anyway, let's get some music here. Is what we'll do real quick, some music. In a sec, as that fades in. So, yeah, I'm part of a team of six at my university. So typically these teams of six are supposed to have three programmers, an artist, a music person, and a story person. Instead, we have two artists and two programmers, and then one music person, one story person. And if you count my secondary role as artist, we would technically have three artists. But I'm one of the two programmers, and the software that the course uses as the main software to use is RPG Maker MV. The idea behind it is, like, it can be used by people that have programming backgrounds, because you can program stuff in Java with this program, from what I hear, but it was also a program that's accessible and usable by like anybody that kind of thing so like anybody in the group can also use this program to like work on the project when need be you know that's what the idea behind it is supposed to be is like it has the complexity and depth there for like the programmers to go ham if they want to but it can also be simple enough for the people who aren't like familiar with programming to get into it yeah exactly the glasses put i where i don't know where i put my glasses <laughs> how's it going cam I don't know where my glasses went. I think they're in my backpack over there. I usually don't take them out. Anyway, I've mentioned before that this is like something that we're working on. So this is going to have to be done by like early December. RPG Maker is weird. From what I've seen, yes, it is. Precocious Spy. Why does that sound familiar to me? It sounds very familiar to me, but hello, hello. I hope things are going well today. But yeah, you're in a tournament right now, a sub tourney online. Oh, neat. So that's like through somebody's Twitch channel as like a sub tourney or something like that. Something along those lines. Have you been here before? Is that why it's familiar? And I just forgot because I'm an idiot who forgets things. Is that what's going on? Wow. Also, that text color on the side of the screen is like very hard to see there. So that's why it was familiar then is Smash 4 then back when I was doing Smash 4 viewer games. Also, I could move the chat box, but at the same time. I don't really want to mess with this layout. What if I messed with like my DBD layout instead? What if I messed with this one here? Because this one, maybe I can move chat somewhere. Chat's a little bit higher. Okay, that's better. That's a bit better there. Yeah, there've been a... I haven't had that many faces from back in the Smash 4 viewer game days stop by since then though. Um, Should I leave this stuff on screen? We could take off like the jar dark cry and stuff like that maybe i'll take off the most recent panels and like the freaking socials thing there i've edited my freaking weird dbd layout anyway um yeah so we're gonna have to get this done by like early december because it's in a semester it's in a semester of university so you know we have that kind of short time limit but we do have an idea for our direction that we want to go in i've like mentioned a little bit about it before but i haven't gone into detail with it before so what we're leaning towards well what we're going to be doing i shouldn't even say leaning towards is we're going to be developing a game where you essentially play as a cute little wispy creature inside the head of a person whose name we're currently leaning towards would be morgan and i guess we might be calling the game that and essentially through this person's head essentially their consciousness you're supposed to it's supposed to be like a stealth based kind of puzzle game almost as you progress from room to room solving puzzles and such and gathering memories is the idea in order to help bring closure to this person i guess help bring them peace have them not be hating themselves and stuff basically oh uh, yeah i better move that chat still shouldn't i freaking where is the chat box there it is let's move it up like that there we go like that like that man now it's visible anyway it's supposed to be a somewhat like narratively based game we'll see what the what our story guy and what our artists come up with to throw that all together and yeah so 
right now all i'm trying to do is just implement some mechanics like i don't even have any sprites to work with right now like we already have an idea of what some of them are going to be looking like this would be our playable character for example is what they would look like and yeah i don't exactly have like full-on walking sprites and stuff like that at the ready yet so right now all we're doing is trying to learn this program a little bit and maybe implement some mechanics here and there so there were a few mechanics that during a meeting a couple days ago, we had established that we wanted to implement. This was this map right here is just me like testing around with like RPG Maker stuff. But anyway, one of the one of the mechanics that we did want to have was the ability to move boxes of some sort. So if I can figure out how to put an object down and make it be movable when you push into it, that'd be good. So we want to have pressure plates as well, where it's like you step on it, something happens, like maybe a door opens so that you can progress to the next room. But like the idea of it being stealth based is there's gonna be various different mobs and monsters, stuff like that, that'll basically be on patrol trying to find you. If anyone's ever played Sly Cooper and has tried to avoid like flashlight guards, we want to try to implement some sort of a like radius in front of them that shows like what their detection range is. So that if you go into that range, they'll essentially chase after you is the idea and you can potentially manipulate that to get them to stay on the pressure plates and have them be stuck there and like open a door for you through that as well another mechanic that we want to implement is something called a beacon which this is probably gonna wind up being a little bit tricky but essentially our little dudo here um which the people in my group want to call him benny but that, that sounds like <laughs> sounds like a freaking grizzled world war ii vet like i I feel like he needs a freaking mystical name of some sort, not freaking <laughs> Betty. Like, most of the ideas my group has had, I could get down with. But that name, I hate it, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> you know? Anyway, our dudo here, we were thinking maybe he could like remove a part of himself or just have something handy that he could place down called a beacon, with that beacon essentially being like a lure to the enemy, so you can essentially use it to like clear a path if need be by throwing the beacon a few tiles onto a spot to lure enemies over, or you can use it to lure enemies over onto like pressure plates when need be. The beacon would probably be on like a cooldown of some sort where it's like once its timer's up, it like returns to you or something like that and the enemies return back to where they were. Um, we want to implement a button to reset each puzzle room when need be. There's some, there's a lot that I'm gonna have to experiment with here. We want to implement like several hub rooms of some sort like we want to have a map that progresses from like one hub to another and each one of those hubs there's like a few different rooms to go in. the game's only going to be like 20 to half an hour long 20 minutes to half an hour long like it has to be short so that we can do it in just a couple months and so that you know the professors don't take forever to mark them but essentially what my group's plan was was to have like a map of some sort here whoops that's like what what is the plan here so i guess we have like a start room where it's like a couple tutorial rooms you go to the first hub there where and we were thinking about there being like some enemies in the hubs but not particularly between these hubs there would be like save rooms and stuff like that and each one of these individual ones would be like a puzzle and some sort of a memory that you get at the end and we essentially want to have these areas be like a reflection of real life, sort of, even though it's in the conscious mind. But as you progress on more and more, yeah, we probably will make it downloadable. Probably, I'll discuss it with my group. I know that I'm gonna be developing it here and be, I'll for sure be doing a playthrough of it on stream when it's done. But yeah, since the sprite has parts of him looking like floating off of the beacon, it makes sense as part of him. Yeah, because he's all like wispy and weird and such. Like it's almost flame-like at the top there, like all, wispy and strange like that and stuff you know um but essentially as we go we want to have this be sort of a reflection of like what the real world would look like as part of like morgan's conscious mind i guess we're going for like a gender neutral name and looking character i think is the idea behind that so essentially as it goes on we want it to look more and more deteriorated like it's getting more and more messed up as we're delving more into the root of the problem so the idea is the first few memories start out like fairly innocent like maybe not that much stuff is going on like it's just some just some kind of typical memories that this morgan character has but then as it goes on it starts getting darker and it start you start experiencing these feelings of hopelessness in that character and stuff like that and what's really dr driven them into like this depressed state and stuff like that is the idea and 
at the end after some sort of final boss and confrontation of some sort we essentially we essentially want our main character's journey here to be bringing peace to this person morgan i guess be like hey life goes on you know not everything's terrible you know let hang on in there but yeah so for the areas we don't have any sprite sheets made yet so i'll just be using generic rpg maker stuff as i test around here and like generic sprites since we don't have any of that at the ready yet but yeah as i was saying it's gonna look like real life but then it's gonna be more and more warped as the memories get darker and darker and our story writer guy he was thinking that like there could be like some options during the memories of like what do you say like here's a couple options something like that but maybe as it goes towards the end it starts becoming more of like the illusion of choice where like both options are basically the same or maybe it forces you to choose an option and it's like the darker kind of option where it's like accepting hopelessness and stuff like that like you want to have a semi-serious kind of story here but when it comes to it deteriorating the landscape to reflect the memories what do we what's this written here <laughs> intact 50 percent fuck <laughs> That sounds about right. So that's basically how we want it to deteriorate from hub to hub here as the world essentially starts falling apart more and more as we start delving in deeper and deeper is the idea. I can't tell what some of this says. Area transition rooms, puzzle question mark, puzzle rooms with memories. Yeah, that's what these ones are. And yeah, we were talking about if we wanted to have like NPCs here. I mean, we were also talking about if we ran out of time, we could also just have like memory NPCs like in the room that give you memories. If we like are really constrained for time, if we don't think we can get it done by December otherwise, we could just have some, you know, NPCs give it to you. Also, I have a bunch of tabs for Fire Emblem open here from when I stream Fire Emblem and I need to refer to that stuff. But essentially, that's how it's gonna progress-ish. Like, I don't know if we'll start at like a top there like that, but at least maybe a Maybe from left to right or something like that. It doesn't have to be tough. This isn't like a final thing. This is just like sketching out ideas and stuff like that um, So like what else is there here? That would be good to Cover and as for the enemies that track down the Main character we ascent. Yeah, a bunch of fire emblem stuff there. Okay, yeah but essentially we want to have the enemies kind of look like weird reflections of like real life kind of stuff like monsters that are like some weird warped version of things that you'd see in real life like <laughs> look at this sketch for example it's a freaking mirror with legs i guess um is there any other stuff that i could show here about that from our art tab no that's the rest there like i've seen a bunch of the art stuff in person but like not past that oh here's a better version of the game map look at this here's a better version Oh, are we gonna start at the top? I think it might be best if we start from like left and go to right. I guess that's not final. We'll figure it out. We have our transition rooms. We'll get some memories. I guess we're leaning towards seven right now and then final call or maybe eight. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a pop tart to you. Looks like a weird pop tart here. Oh yeah, this is when we were still thinking about a name and we were calling it that. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else that we have here that I can show? I can show some more like enemy designs that we have here. Um, like, can I view some of these? It's really small here, but like, because we want to go for like a pixel art kind of style in this. Like, these are all gifts right now, so I don't actually have any regular sprites that I can work with as I'm testing things out here. But just know that this is kind of, whoops, dang it. What stuff is going to wind up looking like? Like, there's the freaking mirror kind of idea and a weird plant, I guess. We have a weird plant. Cool. <laughs> Neat. We've got a wonky plant. Great. Um, freaking. I need to take off my jacket here because now I'm overheating. Um, the spider here looks pretty crazy. <laughs> I like the look of the spider that one of our artists threw together. That's pretty crazy there. What about PVZ cam? Hawa? Oh yeah, we threw together a design document. So, yeah, apparently during game development, most like game devs will create something called a design document, which basically covers about everything. Like, sh should we go through this here before we start? Let get stuff established and stuff. You know. Oh, I see. With the plant, you're saying, are we gonna call it Morgan underscore? I guess something like that. Um. 
<laughs> so what you're saying is you're gonna create the next PMD game? I wish. I wish, man. Thanks for the continued sub there, all Sadair. For two months now, I appreciate the two month resub there, all Sadair. Hope things are going swell. And thanks so much for the sub. Also, I forgot, recently we decided that we would actually have a name for the whole subs and such. So, welcome back to Team Enharmonic, is what we're calling it. So, welcome back so to Team Enharmonic then. Going to create the next PMD game. I wish I could create the next PMD game. This thing's only gonna be like 20 minutes long. <laughs> it's not gonna be a super long thing. It's gonna have to be done by December, so we have two months. And it's gonna be like 20 minutes long at the end. It's not supposed to be longer than that, so that one, we can do it in two months, and two, <laughs> it doesn't take too long for our professors to market at uni and such. But we're gonna try to create something neat, is what we're gonna try to do. But hello, hello there. Like, I can go over some stuff in the in the design document here, so we have a bit of a direction here. So Morgan is a stealth and puzzle game that revolves around an outer representation of the battle that we have with ourselves inside our head. Our primary character, Morgan, has an ongoing battle with the state of their mental health. When or how they choose to cope with it are neglected. It is represented by the obstacles that we face in-game. I can't believe they're calling him freaking Benny. The this is not the look for a Benny, okay? That name has got to change, please. Like, like I was saying before, I'm okay with like most of the things that my group is implementing, but I hate that name. That name's gotta go, okay? A sentient figment of Morgan's mind must carefully traverse the puzzles and enemies that lie within the mind of Morgan in an attempt to help them begin to understand how and why they face such difficulty with their mental health. Yeah, I know, right? That's definitely- also, sorry, white there. There, now the text can be seen. Yeah, this- This is not a Benny. Like, I elected to call him Wisp. That was my idea. And then our story guy was like, let's call him Benny. And then the group was like, yeah, let's call him Benny. And then I was like, what the heck? E would be good as well, honestly. That's another good option there. That's also a solid one. <laughs> Even Benny fits better. <laughs> Not gonna lie. And Eve for O. Oh, that does look a little bit like Eve from Wally, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> Benny White, the good old, the good old actor there would work better as a name than <laughs> Benny would. Oh man. Anyway, where were we here? So, yeah, uh, why they face such difficulty with their mental health and how they can learn to cope with it, gaining the help of others and an overall understanding and recognition of the existence of such struggle. Morgan is a top-down stealth game in which I'm going to call him Wisp was na must navigate a series of puzzles based around successfully sneaking by patrolling enemies in different sized spaces with unique, unique sight lines, patrol patterns, and distraction mechanics. That's something I forgot to mention. It's a good thing I'm looking over this. One of the things that we wanted to mention that we wanted to implement was enemies of different sizes. So we could have an enemy that's like maybe one tile big, one en enemies that are like two tiles big, like they're tall, and enemies that are like two by two. And we might implement that into like the whole pressure plates kind of mechanics, like luring the enemies onto that. So like there might be four pressure plates in a box like that and they all have to be pressed down So you have to like lure an enemy with a beacon onto those four pressure plates or something like that You know freaking where was I? Oh. <laughs> so yeah overall understanding and recognition of existence with that struggle so something like that I skipped some parts didn't I I don't know no wait I didn't um, And distraction mechanics as we progress through the game the freaking wisp and ultimately the player learn more about what has caused inner turmoil for morgan how morgan has dealt with their issues in the past and how we can aid morgan in addressing their mental health struggles is the idea there so yeah design documents kind of go on for a while so for narrative here we begin the game as i'm gonna call him wisp a small a small they literally call him a small white wisp creature whose cute features compare in stark contrast with the demons he's hiding from as the game progresses and the player explores more parts of the dungeon map, Wisp will solve puzzles and interact with seemingly disconnected memories of a human character by the name of Morgan. These memories involve heavy dialogue and are centered around Morgan's choices and agency. In the beginning- I swear, this playlist is not on shuffle, is it? This has been like nothing but Planet Coaster themes so far, has it? It's all Planet Co- I mean, I'm not a compl- It's not too big of an issue, I guess, but like, Planet Coaster stuff is pretty quality, but that is not shuffled at all, Nightbot. Oh yeah, I was listening to <laughs> this for a while because, who oh boy, Link's Awakening soundtrack. Let me tell you, it's jamming. Um, 
We'll say in the beginning, the memories will offer many choices, but as the player progresses further into Morgan's inner psyche, or psyche or whatever the heck, the memories will offer fewer and fewer choices until there are no choices, a symbol of Morgan's current mental state. When Benny reaches the end, they will encounter a wisp that looks similar to its... I, I know that this, these were the ideas our story guy was coming up with recently, where it's like, what if there's like a dark version of the wisp here? Like that's the representation of the game's... of the inner turmoil. So, the, hold on. The idea that our story guy high had was what about for the final boss if we go up against like a dark version of Benny and that's like the symbol of like all the negative emotions and stuff like that and we're overcoming that. My idea is what if the Wisp character that we play as, the player character, is the embodiment of all the negative emotions and that's the reason that they're being hunted by all these enemies like being hunted down and in the end it's basically trying to get morgan to accept the wisp like creature that you play as rather than fight it rather than like push it away and wish that it didn't exist and stuff like that but actually become a like thing of accepts of acceptance there maybe bias by yours is better that's how i was feeling like i'll propose it to our story i think I know I proposed it in our like group chat thing. I'm not sure if you saw it, but I'll probably propose that to him because I feel like that would work better than like just fighting a dark version of the main character at the end there. The Because it would also give like a reason for the fact that it's a stealth game that you're hiding from like all these warped enemies is because like you're a hated force in there. Like if anyone's ever played Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon, for example, the moral of that story, for example, the main antagonist is this being called dark matter, which is basically the embodiment of all negative emotions and hatred and stuff like that. And before the game starts, you and Mew essentially defeat dark matter, but it's not permanent because dark matter can always exist as these negative emotions and just comes back stronger later. So in the second encounter during the events of the game, instead of just straight up defeating it, like, ah, it's gone, you essentially defeat it by accepting it, by accepting that it's a necessary part of the world and that it belongs there, you know? So, the idea that I had is similar to the idea of Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. Like, that's probably around where my inspiration comes from for that idea, is what if you're playing as the embodiment, like, of these negative emotions, but as shown by, like, the way that you interact with the world and the way that you're trying to help, you're shown to not be a malicious force yourself, but you're treated that way by the main character because they don't know how to deal with these emotions and such and all this turmoil but throughout this adventure you learn to bring acceptance to this character like acceptance that that's a part of them and that it shouldn't be holding them back that it shouldn't be seen as something to be completely pushed away and stuff like that that you need to accept even the negative parts of your life like as a part of you that's my take i'm gonna propose it to our story guy and hopefully he likes it because i feel like that works better and it has a lot more meaning and depth to it than just like fighting a dark version of yourself you know is that's how i feel um as stated in the general overview there are two outcomes to this story what that was stated in the general overview was it um in the bad ending benny is swallowed by the other wisp and morgan isn't presenting the final cutscene in the good ending benny of the dark wisp virgin morgan is presenting the final cutscene i'm gonna propose my idea to our story guy I'm gonna propose my idea and see. I'll propose it to the group and see what they think. I mean, I proposed it once in the group chat. One person saw it. One of our artists noticed it. I don't think anyone else did. <laughs> and then the idea kind of left. So I'm gonna propose it again and push it a little bit, see if people like it, because I like that idea. You know, um, characters. Morgan is the human character who is barely holding it all together. The player gets to know Morgan by experiencing critical moments of happiness, sadness, and fear in their life. Freaking terrible name is an evolved version of morgan's childhood friend who embodies the positivity in their life and as morgan's childhood friend wants them to be happier which is why the good aim involves them working through the memories missed i briefly skimmed through this once so like this is like the second time i'm seeing details like this um i guess that's the name of a childhood friend then um cutscenes each of morgan's oh i think i'm either i skimmed over this stuff before or i just didn't see it each of Morgan's memories will play out in a similar way that a visual novel game is set up with pictures showing off what happens in heavy dialogue slash narration to supplement the story. Here's visual novel cutscenes and the choices therein. I need to take off my scarf. It's starting to get warm in here. Of narrative consequences, if not obtained, by playing through them. 
I stated in the overview that cutscenes will play to a certain theme. Or, oh, now my next cold regarding the dialogue choice system in which the theme of agency is explored. The setting of the game can be explained as a deterioration of mental stability and therefore draws on the idea that a person who is falling apart can make rational decisions if they make any at all. Um, at first I thought I misread that, but no. Um, as a result, the environment can be explained in three parts, stable, deteriorating, and broken. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's the whole idea of like we see like regular kind of memories and then it starts falling apart a bit and then it's like completely busted. Uh, apparently there's... Apparently we're going for two endings? Yeah, I'm gonna propose my story idea. Um, gameplay winning the game. The player completes the game by progressing through the level and counting a sufficient number of Morgan's memories. As mentioned in the story section, the game has two possible endings, a good ending or a bad ending influenced by the number of memories successfully explored by the player. However, the game is forgiving and wants the player to reach a good ending. So there are multiple instances where it will be indicated that counting memories is good and ignoring them is bad. Um, how do what do we have for mechanics here? So a player has a limited set of abilities in the game. They can only flee enemies and cannot engage them. The player, as well as enemies, can move in four directions, up, down, and to the sides. For the player, this is accomplished using WASD. It should be easy to implement. And enemies move at their own speeds, independent of the player. We were thinking, like, the bigger enemies would move slower and the smaller ones would be faster, was the idea behind that. Player walking in front of a movable object. Not all objects are movable, but those that are will be indicated visually to the player by means of a unique outline color. That's news to me. Um, so yeah, we are going to have movable objects. Um, yeah, the, here's the beacon idea. So it is supposed to be part of his body, I guess. Beacon acts as a lure to disable patrolling enemies. Also, this was made like early this week. This was before this meeting a couple days ago where we were like establishing some of this stuff further. Um, yeah, this... Yeah, there's the different sizes there. Fail point, save state, freaking... Not save state. Whatever. Uh, yeah, there's a, I probably shouldn't go through like everything here, but we've got a bunch of stuff. Oh, there's some more prototypes. So we've got the look for the... Oh, we actually do have a beacon sprite. Cool. <laughs> Neat, man. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of stuff on music and cutscenes and stuff and stuff. Oh, there was that layout that I was showing before and such. Um, yeah. Production timeline, level design complete October 3rd. Well. So, uh, I have until Thursday. A working playable level. Well, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try not to let my team down here, you know? Oh, man. So, there's a couple things called vertical slices that we have to turn in as well that are, like... We have to turn into the professor's, like, part of the game. So apparently the first one's due by then. Um. Neat, man. Anyway. Where do I start? I don't have any sprites to work with. I'm just working. Like, my idea right now is just how... Let's learn how to implement some mechanics. I'm probably going to be doing a decent bit of Googling. Um. How about I make, like, a new map? Can I make a new map here? Wait a second, is Carvey here? I don't know. I don't know, man. Freaking. Let's call this map. Actually, nah, the, nah, the first map can be mechanic testing. We can just edit this one. Freaking, this one's gonna be mechanic testing. Let's try it out. I don't care about the tile set. Scroll type. The heck, man. So yeah, we can adjust the dimensions of it. How about we make it like... I don't know. How about we make it like... No, not 240. How about we make it like 40 by like... 25? Okay, I want to actually be able to work on all of it on the screen there. Re edit. Display name didn't change here. Let's just change it here then as well. Okay. Testing is what we do. Um, how about we set this one to like 30 and this one to like, I don't know, 15. Bam. There, I can work with this. Should, should I just make some generic stuff for like testing stuff out? Like, what's this? This is the freaking path thing. Let's just throw some stuff together just for the sake of testing purposes. This is going to be our little playground to test out mechanics, I guess. Where's water at? Where was this thing? I don't know what those are. I'm new to this software. 
here. This is our mechanic testing playground thing. There's probably a quicker way to fill that. But we are just gonna make this our freaking test space where I might try to figure out how to implement some of the weird mechanics that we're gonna go for, but with like this generic sprite there, I guess, or something. Dang it, man. There, this is our, actually, wait, no. I want more space to actually walk on. It's probably a better way to do this, isn't there? Well, the control isn't the answer. Shift. Pfft. No, shift is not good there. Okay, we'll just do this. And this is our freaking play area. This is this is the mechanic testing area. Is the, what this is gonna be. There's something. I don't know. So basically, what's here already? Save changes to the game? Okay. What do we have here if I open the generic RPG maker thing? It opens like a generic menu here. It's called testing. Wow, powered by MV. Whoa, dude. We're jamming now. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that tune in like the labs. Um, can I affect the window set? Oh, dang it, it's stuck as a box. There might be a way to affect that, I don't know. Um, so right now, by default in RPG Maker, you use the arrow keys to move around, which is like weird. Okay, first of all, we need to figure out how to make it so it's just one dude. Freaking, get rid of them. We're not making a typical RPG. I don't need these dudes. How do I make them go? Well, I, there's probably, oh, these are just the characters available. How do I adjust who starts out in the party? I'm new to this software. I don't know what I'm doing here. I've watched like a few tutorial videos. Um, I can't delete ones apparently. That sucks. System to starting team. I appreciate it, pork chops. Guess that's here. Starting party. Great, thanks. I guess we can have this guy as our testing guy. Like, optimally, hopefully it won't be that long until we can implement the... That once we have like some walking animations ready for that. But I still have no idea what... Like anything about this software, basically. This is like my first time actually using it. Apart from like, in a lab briefly. At <laughs> uni. Apart from that. So, freaking Harold here is going to be our test guy. So, we'll try to implement some of these mechanics. Let's go into events and try to make like a freaking thing there. Like, let's see here. Oi. Like, what if we try to implement a freaking box moving mechanic? Where's a generic box that I can push? This is some crazy built and stuff there. What if I make like a chest or something? And we can push it. Or like a boulder or something. It could be anything. This is just to test out mechanics and stuff, right? Is there a box? There's chests. Let's have it be a freaking chest. So. Yeah, that can exist there normally. Same as characters works there. So, what we do like custom movement when... Oh, no, that just is for the route. Um, so, how do we implement... Pushing something, for example. This is just me learning this software right now. Maybe it's time to go to Google. Maybe it's time to go to that freaking Google. Uh, no. RPG Maker MV. Push object. I don't know. Just lurking. I appreciate the lurk, Carvia. Pushing and pulling our objects on the map. Okay, to be done easily with events, set the object to player touch. As, okay, I figured that much, but I wonder if we give it movement, but the trigger is player touch or something. It would probably wouldn't be under autonomous movement. Hmm, so maybe we can have it be, nope, probably not there, movement. We can change the event location, maybe. Hold on. So, with a movement route to move away from player. You scared me there, Jesse. You want to come up here? Jeez, you scared me there. Hey, hey. I, I didn't hear you come down. So all of a sudden, something touched my arm. It was my dog licking my arm. You startled me as, for a sec there. Silly doggy, how you doing? Scared me there. Anyway, let's see here. Um. Yeah. Do tutorial, bro? Who needs that? <laughs> That'd be silly, man. <laughs> but hello, Blue Eagle. 
Now my doggy has brought me a toy. Oh man, anyway, so we can move away from player as the movement system there, activating on player touch. But not under autonomous movement. So I guess... If we go under a custom movement route, we can just do move away from player here then. Move away from player, on player touch. So let's apply that and test it out by interacting with player touch. There's a freaking mosquito in my room here. I don't know how that happened. I hate that music. Testing! Whoa! Well, that's not right. Okay. Yeah. Let's see here. Um... So I don't think there would be anything in here, movement-wise. Oh, we can probably do it there then. So let's just do fixed here, and then on player touch, it'd probably be here. Yeah, move away from player. So we'll do that, wait for completion and such. So I wonder if I do have to specify in here on player touch. I guess it'll play the contents here on player touch then. So let's go ahead and test that out. Powered by MV. Whoa, bro. Whoa, dude. Crazy music. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's not right, is it? <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> that's not quite right, is it? Not quite. Anyway, um... Let's go into the event contents here, and let's see here. Let's see then. Anyway, um... Just seeing what we have to mess around with here. I guess that's the good old tutorial. Stuff there. What's your goal? Uh, that's long. That's a long thing there. I don't want to go through 21 pages again, but I'm working with a small team at my university, essentially, and I'm one of the two programmers on the team, and we have to get like a somewhat working prototype done by then, like just some basic mechanics there. Right now, on the short term, just trying to implement a box moving mechanic. You mean the chest, okay. Yeah, on the short term, just trying to implement a like moving thing with player touch to move a, like a box of some sort. Yeah, I already know about dialogue events and such. Um, let's see here. Step 10 for moving object. Moving rock. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Warning, during a tutorial, if you execute a command other than the one the tutorial indicates to, you can go to the help slash stop tutorial to stop the current tutorial and start over. Okay. Do you have the project we finished step 9? Nope. And now we will load the data required to start this step. Okay. So I guess we're starting a new project for this. And put the project name and game title and then click OK. Moving box is the name of this. You lost the tournament there, Cam. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, Peach can be very difficult to deal with sometimes. <laughs> Please hold by the project. Project? Yeah, project. That's how it's pronounced. But the project finishes loading. As it implements all the preset stuff. Mage.png. Whoa, bro. Man, Planet Coaster music is so good. Wow, that's pretty cool looking there. Now we'll start the tutorial. Okay, this time we're going to create a dungeon setup. Rocks that move when pushed. Okay. Next, stone cave from the tree view. Whoops, I apparently can't click right. Um, the stones you push will be placed in the passage three tiles. Wait, stones you push to move will be placed in the passage three tiles in width above the entrance. I don't know what that sentence means. The stones you push will be placed in the passage three tiles in width a bit above the entrance. Whatever. Uh, the placement coordinate will be 1618 from the entrance. It's 11 spaces up and one space right. Then what's the point of the coordinates if it's 11 and one or 
completely different. Whatever. After making the event, we'll copy paste it to the first coordinates of left and right of this page. First find 1618. Is that what it's pointing to right there? So, okay, we're already on event mode. Right there. Um, and just moving. What if I don't want to? Fine. Moving rock. Boopity bop. Next. Yeah, we'll get a rock there. Other one. Where's other one here? Someone burned down your she shed? Is that just supposed to be shed? Is this... How what? Is this a thing that actually happened, Carvia? Um... Or is this some weird... Pun of some sort or something going on in a game? I don't understand. It's just a commercial reference. Wanted to see if you got it. Is this a not State Farm? Okay, so it was a reference to something. Just being random, alrighty. Also, maybe I should move. Chat elsewhere where it's visible. I could move it like here, or something. It could be visible down there, I guess. I'm totally messing up my 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 Dead by Daylight layout here. I'm stuttering now because apparently I can't words. Um. Direction fix. Yeah, yeah, player touch. So let's see here. Look like you can use a bit of randomness in your life at that moment. You're good now. Cool. Okay, now the chat box is messed up again. For long sentences. There, that. I don't know. My Dead by Daylight layout's completely screwed now. Um, let's see here. I'm already on the page two tab. Set movement around, move away from player. Set the target to this event. Oh! That's probably good to do. Movement out as follows. Direction fix off. Move away from player. What? Why are you pointing there? Direction fix off. Move away from player. Direction fix on. Oh. Where's direction fix on and off? There it is. Jeez. Just blocked by my camera a little bit. Move away from player, direction fix on. Cool. Um, check off the skip if cannot move, otherwise the rock can't be moved because of an obstacle, it'll freeze. Okay. Move the check from wait for completion so that the next movement will eventually run concurrently. Okay. Next, okay to do the movement route. Next is setup of player movement. Double click the next line. What, is the player gonna move a space with it? I guess. I guess it would sort of make sense that you move with it if you're pushing it, but like, I know that like moving boulders with HM strength in Pokemon, you stay still even when the boulder moves. Um, so yeah, target is the player this time. Change the movement route as follows. Change speed three. Change speed. There it is. Jeez. So a little bit slower it is. One step forward. And then change speed back to what it normally is. Okay. Player movement speed is usually four. During the time the rock is moving, it will be the speed of the rock. You gotta play League of Legends. Have fun, Cam. Check off the skip if cannot move. Boopity boppity. Check on wait for completion. This is so that the event waits for both rock and player movements finish. I can't words. Event is complete. Click OK to set the event. What's the difference between OK and apply then? Well, copy the completed rocks to the left and right. Click the completed rock. Bam, done. Yeah, we'll copy the event here. And paste it there then. Um, in the same way, click it here. I can't actually tell where it's pointing. Okay, there, I guess. Now the three rocks have been placed in order to play test. Let's make sure the player's starting position is near the entrance. Okay. Um, yeah, that then. So, set starting position for player then. Save the project and start the playtest. Bam, man. Powered by MV. Fancy, man. <laughs> Moving box. And drop down there? No. Sucks, man. Around we go, I guess. So, I guess at least I can move the one rock there. I suppose. No? I'm stuck now. It's clearly something went wrong. 
Clearly, something is not right here, considering it's frozen now. Great. You know, in the playtest, there will be a short explanation. The rocks move properly. If it didn't go well, let's do the steps over again. If it went well, let's try to think about why they moved. Well then, nicely done. Tutorial ends. It didn't work. It didn't do anything. Set starting position. Play. Hold on. What happens if we copy the event and paste it, say, there? And then... Hold on a second here. Hold on a hot second. Hold on a ticker. Moving box! That time it moved. That time it works. But then we freeze because there's like a solid wall there. We're gonna have to figure out how to fix that for the game. This is what we're going to have to do. Why didn't switch up timestamps? You like timestamps? What do you mean for timestamps? It does, doesn't it? Does it not? Yeah, it freezes when you hit a dead end. And then you're just stuck there forever. So that is a bit of a problemo, is it not? Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do say this for now. Um, paint, boopity bop, paste that. And let's go ahead and, you know, remember what this is. Remember what that all is there. One second has wait for completion, so I guess that was clicked off then. Hold on. Whoops. Whoopsie doopsie. For the movement route. Wait for completion. What if we don't wait for completion just for the player there? It's waiting but cannot move. Let's see here. Let's see here if that's clicked off there. We're not waiting for a completion in that case. Cool, not frozen forever. Wait, but that's not the dead end there. Now I'm frozen forever. Maybe I'll... Did I create a new thing here? Whoops. That's why that didn't work there. We have to edit this one. I did edit this one, huh? Yeah, skip if cannot move. If you can't move it, then just skip it. Skip it, man. Hmm. Yeah, waiting for completion is turned off. But it's still freezing up there, though. Is the thing. Like, if I go against a dead end like that, then it freezes forever. So on player put skip on play 2. So that is... Let's see here. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that be. Like something directly on the player? I wouldn't be able to adjust that as an event, but this is the movement route for the player. Is what it is there. Like, I'm sorry that I don't know what you're trying to explain to me here, but I don't know these things. Um, anything here that adjust that? Skip on play two on player. Try wait to, like, try wait for completion just to see what it does. Let's see here. See what this does. <laughs> see what that's like. See what exactly we've got here. Moving box! Freaking. Not frozen. Oh, maybe I shouldn't wait for completion on the thing there. We're not moving with it anymore. So, yeah, maybe this one shouldn't wait for completion. It should immediately do the next action. So if that's like that, then you should still be moving with it. But now, not be frozen forever, maybe? 
Maybe? I don't know. Moving box. Though it's a boulder. So now we're moving with it again. And now we're not frozen forever. With wait for completion on like that. Okay. There's a moving box mechanic thing in a nutshell. Um, where's my other project thing? Where's that test thing? Dang it. Testing. There it is. <laughs> my freaking test area here. So let's go ahead and adjust this here. Let's just delete that. So let's go ahead and set movement route. See if I remember how to do this. Skip if cannot move to check off wait for completion. So let's try to remember the steps here. Try to remember the steps here. <laughs> to try to learn this off. Are you may need to make a game at some point, Precocious Spot? You have an idea in mind for what kind of a game you'd want to make there? Testing, 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 testing. Patrick, I don't remember what episode that's from. Usually I get SpongeBob references, but I don't remember that one there. Action fix on. Something Metroidvania like. Interesting. Would you be planning on doing that with like a team of people or something that you want to make on your own? You like programming 2D platforming mechanics? Yeah, it would definitely be pretty neat. Just by yourself, that's gonna be a lot of work then, but also a cool project to work on. I don't know if I'd ever make a game on my own. Like, this is for a class, but... It's an idea that I've always thought about, but I don't know if I'll ever wind up doing so. Um, direction fix on. Move away from player. Direction fix off. Ruby bop, and then... Whoops. I'm forgetting things already. This event there. You need know, artists make it look good, but you could probably make the rest of the game by yourself, probably. Yeah, art is tricky. Luckily for my group here, if you include me, there's three artists. <laughs> so literally half of us can do artwork for this group. It's wonderful. My primary role is programmer though, but I'm an artist too. Speaking of, I made an art wall. Like I don't, I don't think I've shown this yet. You probably won't be able to see it because it's so dim over there. But over in my room there above my bed, I made an art wall of like, yeah, you can't really see it. But all those things on the wall, just trust that those are like a ton of drawings I've made over a long time. I made a great art wall. Um, let's see here. For on first and off second, you may be right there. <laughs> may well be. You're our best a copycat. That's what I used to think. That's what I used to think there. And then I started doing original stuff anyway, and then it started working out. And I started making I started making stuff like that. And emotes. And stuff. But yeah. Made off then on. What order did I do here? Hmm. You don't understand form? Are you too lazy to learn? And it was the most thing. Don't understand what? Sorry? I assume that's a typo there. Yeah, we could always try off and then on instead see there boopity bop um form is an art term no i guess sort of i'm not really too like i don't really know any art term i've never been in a single art class in my life i don't know anything about art apart from what i draw and i draw things and they sometimes work out well that's all i know about art i draw things and sometimes it looks good that's my art knowledge um so there's that um so skip if cannot move wait for completion and then one step forward and direction fix on i was gonna adjust speed wasn't i i don't think wait does the direction fix matter for the play i'm already forgetting things um so yeah there's like slower and then normal is the idea there um doesn't know how to make something from your head appear on paper but you can make something you see appear on paper yeah i well i mean pretty much most artists use reference images like i typically look at references and then will like get ideas for the general shape but then try to make it like my own unique thing from there but still 
doing that. Like, for example, this face cam overlay is something that I drew myself. That sword at the top there, which is the sword of the creator from Fire Emblem Three Houses, that was the hardest to do. This one took me six hours to make, and I drew it before Fire Emblem Three Houses came out. So the only images of that sword that I had to work with were, like, the few shots from the trailers. So... I basically took like 10 screenshots, like of 10 different shots that the short sword was shown in the trailer there and basically used it to make what my interpretation of the sword like that looked like, even though there wasn't a single image of the sword sideways like that. But I had like a whole bunch, I had literally my right monitor here full of references, copying detail for detail to make my interpretation of what I believe that sword should look like when sideways. Also, there were some details that, like, weren't shown in the trailers at all, like the hilt there, for example. Which, now that the game's out, I know what it looks like. It looks like my interpretation of the hilt wasn't actually too far off. But it's definitely not perfect. But yeah, 3-speed move 1-space forward, then speed 4. I think that's what I did, right? E. So, like, let's see here if that's... Like, we'll pretend it's not a chest. But we'll just see if that... Affects that. Cool, man. And let's make sure it doesn't die when I push it all the way to the side in this testing area. Cool. Not frozen forever. Sweet, man. If I go to the edge of the screen here. Cool. Cool, man. It's still opening and stuff. Wonky. We'll, pret we'll pretend it doesn't do that. Anyway, um... Let's see here. How would one program a pressure plate as another thing? How would one do that? What's something on the ground? Freaking, I could put a door on the ground. Pretend that it's a pressure plate or something. Or freaking, how about this blue thing there? Bam, look at that. Um. Definitely a lot different than regular programming that I'm used to. It'd be nice that I could make, it'd be nice if I could make like an if statement where it'd be like, if there's an object on top, then change this variable around and that variable will affect another event for like if something's blocked. Is my idea for implementation for that. But I don't know where one starts on that. Like, let's see here. Um. I wonder. Moving rock, door, don't even know about that right now. Damaging floors. Switches. Like, I know a little bit about switches, not a ton. But, check on conditional branch. Is that one of the things here? Because, like, in, oh, there, yeah, it is here. But yeah, I just wonder how exactly... I'd have the condition be something's on top of it. Like, how would I detect that? Yeah, yeah. Have you finished project refinish in step four? Nope. New project. Freaking, yeah, save changes there. Um. I don't know. Conditional branches one. Or something like that. Beats me. <laughs> Man, oh man. Such calling Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon music. We were just speaking about that game earlier. Watch this be from like PMD3 or something and I was completely wrong. Yep, PSMD Serene Village. Uh, new project created. Now we will start the tutorial. In this step, we'll learn how to create events using switches and conditional branching. Like normal town. I'm already there. <laughs> Gonna make three people. Music's so quiet. Also, I guess my volume is down. That's better. You can make three people lined up horizontally. The location will be by the right side of the statue in town center. Here's we're gonna make an event where an NPC will give you a potion once. Done. Breaking. Fine, I'll follow the tutorial for now. Yeah, yeah, click actor three. Wow, it really wants me to do exactly as it is here. Make a message saying the item has been received. Show text, okay. Enter, I'll give you a potion. I'll give you nothing. 
But yeah, kind of same idea with it being an event and such. I'll give you nothing. Done. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, change items, freaking increase. I already know a bit about this stuff. Your potions whenever you talk to her, so we're gonna add a switch that contains the information that potion was received. Double click the blank line. Hey, Jesse, what you doing? Wanna come here? Come see me? Hey, silly doggy, wanna come up here? Can you come up here? Big jump. <laughs> Not feeling like jumping right now, huh? Uh, can you come up here? Come up on there? Hey! Hey! Can you come up here? Hmm? How you doing? How you doing, sweet doggy? How are you? How are you feeling? Have you come down to see me? Hey? Uh, bada bing bada boom, double click the blank line, control switches. Here's the first switch, you can name switches so they're easy to distinguish, click the switch. First option, the lit, whoa, whatever. <laughs> Operations hit the on, click OK. New event page, so then it does nothing as long as the switch, there, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, same look. Same one, and then... The condition is the one there that we said, so it'll automatically go to this page then. Use that potion wisely, okay? Freaking. Done. <laughs> now we're done setting up this event. Here there will be a detailed explanation about event appearance and appearance conditions and pages. Um. Create multiple pages for events, and when their conditions are fulfilled, the event will change to the appropriate page. Yep. Multiple pages when the condition is met, the page with the highest number will be executed. Yep. No condition is specified, that page will always be considered to have its condition met. On the other hand, if two or more conditions are specified, the page will be considered to have its conditions met when all conditions are met. I'm reading this way too fast. Consider our current case. When switch one is on, the condition of the page is met when they... Okay, I've already looked at this. That's all, that's pretty important, so would you like to read the explanation again? No, I almost hit yes. I'm actually gonna create someone whose dialogue changes depending on whether or not you've gotten a potion. I've already done stuff like this before. I'll do it again anyway. It's probably good to get familiar anyway. Potion Judge, whoa, man. Look, Actor 3. Fine, that guy. Initial branch to determine whether or not the player has gotten the potion, first clicking contents. Conditional branch. Check that the switch is checked off and that potion get yeah, potion is set to on. Okay. Great else branch. Yep. So if it's on, then we'll enter dialogue for when you have it. Enter use potions wisely. Freaking Gah Pain. It's like okay to get the text. Double click under else, so if you don't have it, freaking grab that potion, you fool. Done, easy peasy. Now we're done setting up the events, which is recorded event conditions, such as completing actions that are useful for divine processes. But how do I check once an object has been moved to a certain place? Well, I need to figure out. Although it's possible to achieve the same results without conditional branching by increasing event pages like you do with Potion Woman, you could also use conditional branching with Potion Woman. When images or other conditions need to change, you'll have to use event pages, but in cases like this, you're free to choose. In an event where you lose a potion, double click two spaces right at the ban. Okay. Potion. Taker guy. I love how it doesn't actually make you for sure do the ones that it wants you to. Booby bop, show text, enter, give me a potion, freaking. I'm gonna enter yoink. Man, he's gonna take it. Change items, freaking. Decrease, yep, that item there, buy that. Now process for losing a potion is made, if you don't have one, nothing will happen. Gotcha. Now that creation is complete, please save your work up until now, and try out the thing. Um, neat man, things are happening.
Conditional branches won. I'm so hyped for it. Wait, where is this? Where is this here? Oh, we spawn up there. Okay. I don't know what that stands for. I'm sorry. I assume that stands for I gotta go. Well, thanks for stopping by and thanks for the help as well, Blue oh, Eagle. And thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Awesome. Appreciate you stopping by and for the help. Hope you have an awesome rest of the day there. All right, talk to this guy. I give you nothing. I'm a vessel 666. God, the pain. Yoink. Cool. Things are happening. But. Let you test again to check out their. Sure. Okay, how about we do. That. Maybe. Maybe it'll be something in conditional branching too. You're going to try it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have a project you finished in step five? I believe so here. Loading the step five project. That's. This right here, conditional branch is one, right? Project loaded. Um, in this step, we'll change up the previous step and learn more about conditional branching. In step five, we use a switch to determine if conditions were met. However, it's also possible to determine if the player has a potion or not without using switches. Chat, yeah, with variables. But. Can I change the appearance and condition from switch to item? Remove the check from switch. Check off item. Make sure it's that the potion will be fulfilled when you have the item in question. Open page one. And we no longer need a control switch, so we'll just delete it. Okay. Delito. Um. Okay, and it will be applied. Double click the man who judges whether or not you have a potion. Uh -huh. Change the condition on conditional branch. Right click and select edit. Okay. Fourth page. Just checking for item. Yep. Select okay. Condition is the party possesses a potion. Now we're done editing the event. Okay. Is that all this one shows? Is that all the thing shows there? Conditional branch is one. I'm so hyped. Whoa, man. Give you nothing. I'm a vessel 666. God, the pain. Freaking yoink. There's some more explanation. We've learned that by making a condition that generates items, we perform different actions than with a switch. Create a situation where once you get an item, you can never get it again. We use switches for a situation where you can see the item continuously. It's best to branch using items. Okay. So many other conditions you can specify, so please try them out for yourself to learn about them. But the one you will have the most opportunities to use is the switch. Borderlands. Dang it. Didn't quite answer what I needed to answer there. Okay, testing. Let's open the testing one here. So, I still have no idea how to detect if this has moved onto that spot there. Actually, yes I do. I just had an idea. How do I make new variables? Um, control variables. Um, we are going to create a variable called box one position is what it's gonna be. Oh, but I'm gonna have to create horizontal and vertical ones. So let's see here. Box one, each position. And we're gonna create another variable. This is just my weird idea that I'm toying around with. Box one, V position. So, yeah, how do I make it so that if it goes to the right, it adds to the horizontal position. If it goes to the left, it subtracts and same idea for vertical. That was the idea that I had. And once it reaches certain values, so it knows that it's in a certain place, then it changes another variable over to say that it's on the pressure plate. That's my idea. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> um, let's see here. RPG, maker, MV, push onto pressure plate. Kind of mechanic. How do we do that? 
pressure plate type switch. So let's see here. Um, event priority is super low player, but I want an object to be able to be on the pressure plate. Or an event to be more specific to be on the pressure plate. And we'll trigger only when the player moves on it. You can make a rock, the rock and event same priority as player, but then the player might need to move toward the rock. To, no, this is move an object on a pressure plate though. Pressure plate. Hmm. Are there if statements here for like branching logic? Not system settings. Hmm. The conditional branch. So what if, hmm, I can't seem to figure out how to have the condition be what direction it moves. No event. Hmm. Push object on pressure plate. How to make a button triggered by puzzle test. Maybe I can look at some stuff here later. Maybe, maybe. Hmm. Gotta be a way for that. But it's gonna be tricky though, apparently. Like, let's see here. Let's turn off the volume on this. How to make a button triggered by pushing a rock on it. Let's see, and I have to watch two ads first. Thanks, YouTube. It's also the creator's fault, I guess. Because ad revenue. So let's see here. Oh, he's doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Oh, he's doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Maybe I should be doing some of this work off stream, testing out. Like maybe a lot of this testing stuff to learn mechanics I might do off stream or something like that it seems like it gets decently crazy. And then maybe once we start like development, once I'm like comfortable with this software, I would like to do that. And I figured that's probably what it meant there, Cam. I don't know how much I missed that, but I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Really like using those, those Franker face emotes are the extension emotes in general. Yeah, not a lot of people have extensions, so not a ton of people know that these are, you know, things that exist on the channel. All these extra emotes I've made and stuff. All these crazy things and such. But yeah, I... I think I'm going to prioritize having streams be more development of this game rather than testing out mechanics. Like maybe I'll do that from time to time, but maybe I'll do some more mechanic testing off. Well, I'm going to have to do more mechanic testing off stream. Like there's progress that has to be done on this, you know? There has to be. But yeah, I think for now I'm going to wrap up this here though. Our first development stream in a sense which is just me talking about the project and testing out some stuff is basically all this was but before i completely wrap things up let's pause that for a sec 
I will share one more thing about the project here. We do have a first prototype for what the soundtrack could be. So, like I was saying, we wanted it to be like a kind of stealth-based dark areas that are like deteriorating, stuff like that, as you're exploring around and avoiding these enemies and gathering memories. So, this is a potential for a main kind of theme for the game as you're exploring around that our sound guy threw together. As you explore around the areas and such. So, you know, we're... Apart from the programming side of things, we definitely have a direction for things so far. But, you know, we, <laughs> we don't really have any progress right now on the programming side of things. <laughs> on the actual development of it side of things, you know? My camera's a little bit crooked. Better. I don't know if that even showed up on stream. <laughs> this slight crookedness. But yeah, so this is... This could be what the game winds up sounding like. Could whale be? Good chance of that. So yeah, it's just like a minute long. But yeah, I I do like what our sound guy threw together, for sure. I feel like it expresses the theme that we're trying to go for with this whole project. You know, I feel like it does that. And that's all it is. Then it stops. Um, but yeah, as for the as for the first development stream of this, I'm gonna wrap things up here. So thanks all who stopped by and hung out for this. And next time we're probably gonna start actual development. I don't know. Guess we'll find out.